Hey there. Um, here's another Friday night update. Um, I'm thinking about making a couple of videos. One uh, in response to a comment uh, um, posted to one of my videos about the USSR, my growing up in the USSR. There was a question about uh, how I would compare the psychology in the USSR versus the psychology in the society in the United States. And I have a couple of things to say about that, so I'll probably be making a video about that soon, maybe tonight. There's another another thing. Uh, oh yeah, um, I read the book by Brian Kaplan, The Myth of the Rational Voter, and it's, a, it's an interesting and weird kind of book, and I'll talk about what's weird about it, in my view, and about my, own, my general impression of the book. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, I've been meaning to make this video about the unions. It's just just an economics video. Um, just a couple of points I wanted to make about the nature of the unions and the union legislation. Um, although I, I, I do think that most of you guys already know what's what. Still, for the benefit of maybe some of your friends or some of you guys who have not thought about this question too much, um, might be interesting. Anyways, um, so yeah, Fright Night update, what's happening? Oh, I, I went to the range today again, uh, tested out, uh, not tested out, but I've, I've sort of sighted in my uh, uh, 22 caliber pistol that I bought in order to be able to practice frequently, and I bought a uh, Smith & Wesson M&P 22, which is um, a clone of sorts of larger caliber pistols like 9mm and the, uh, the 40 caliber in their M&P series. I'm not a big fan of Smith & Wesson, mostly because I don't know much about them. Um, I don't own any other guns by Smith & Wesson other than the M&P 22. But yeah, so the form factor of that pistol is it's not small. It's, it's actually, it feels like a, a full-size pistol or what is it, compact? I'm not sure which classification to use here, but basically it feels like a normal automatic in your hand. Uh, unlike something like uh, the Ruger SR-22 or uh, the Walther P-22, I think is the name of the pistol, which feel and look like much smaller guns and lighter guns. Well, M&P-22 is also very light, but at least size-wise, uh, the form factor is uh, sort of an adult, adult gun. So yeah, I spent some time there today at the range shooting the M&P-22. My sights were a little off um, last time around, and I had to... I figured out which way it was printing, and I, I had to compensate by aiming low and to the right. Um, and, uh, oh, the picture just disappeared. Anyway, um, interesting, my, my computer locked on me here. Um, so I, I, I sighted it in today, just, you know, shooting from a bench range, bench rest from a short distance, of like start, starting at seven yards, and I... I was able to put everything in like a, a, a four or five inch circle eventually and then I put it out to uh, 10 yards and then 15 yards and it's actually I'm, I'm, I'm actually uh, after today I'm quite happy that I bought the gun the promise of having a, a 22 caliber gun as a means to inexpensively practice shooting a lot um, because you know you know my other guns that I own are in 40 caliber and one forty caliber round costs about thirty cents. So thirty cents. So you know you shoot a hundred rounds, which is a matter of you know as short as uh, you know as little as ten minutes it could be, and there goes your thirty bucks. So it's it's not an inexpensive hobby. Um, I will be shooting, and I am shooting uh, the forty caliber, and you know I'm I'm planning to get a nine millimeter or two as well, uh, and those cost about you know twenty twenty one cents per round. But still, you know, you, you, you get what I'm saying. It's not, um, it's not nothing, you know. And my typical trip to range is at least a couple of hundred rounds for the, uh, you know, big caliber like a, like the 40 caliber. But today I shot probably like 300 rounds. And it was nothing. Cost nothing. Um, like a, a box of uh, 500 and 550 rounds in 22 long rifle caliber cost like 20 bucks. So. Uh, I spent less than I would have spent at, uh, f on uh, 50 rounds, 40 caliber, and I shot several hundred rounds today. And it does improve my trigger control. I've, I've figured out, it, it, actually, practice does make perfect. As long as you know what you're doing, as long as you, uh, 
recognize your mistakes correctly, diagnose your mistakes correctly, uh, you can actually get better with uh, more shooting, with repetition. And I figured out what my problem was. I am anticipating recoil. I am jerking the gun as I pull the trigger. So it's not an independent motion of my trigger finger, but rather uh, you know, other fingers and the hand and the wrist move when I squeeze off uh, around. And I was working on that deliberately today, and I was uh, using a couple of tricks that uh, an instructor taught me. Basically, one of them is repeating your mantra, focusing on the front sight, intensely focusing on the front sight, and uh, in order to uh, stop anticipating recoil, anticipating the, the, the precise moment when the uh, the shot goes off, and compensating with that for that by jerking the gun, inadvertently jer jerking the gun to the left um, to compensate for recoil, left and down mostly, um, you repeat to yourself, you focus on the front sight, and you repeat to yourself, side picture, side picture, side picture, side picture, and you crowd out other thoughts, and you sort of leave no room in your mind for the anticipating, anticipation process. And uh, you can achieve the uh, desired effect of uh, the precise moment of a shot being a, a bit of a surprise to you, which is kind of ideal. You, you know, you're not supposed to know the precise millisecond when your gun goes off. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's one one good thing that you can achieve even with a small caliber, caliber gun. Again, you know, when, when I go from like 22 to a 40 caliber, obviously the boom and the recoil and the uh, the report of the gun is much more violent, but practice does help, or at least I, I didn't get to shoot my 40 caliber today. Um, I was planning on it, but I, you know, I looked at the watch and I realized it's, it's time to go home. So I, uh, you know, I left it in the, left it in the bag and didn't, uh, didn't get to shoot the 40 caliber. But it, I, I feel that I've actually gotten better, and I was more confidently placing shots um, in that four-inch circle uh, at, at at ten and then fifteen yards, and I'm feeling actually f feeling pretty good about myself. I posted a picture of my target on Facebook. Again, it's not spectacular, but it's not nothing. I'm getting better, which is great. Um, what else is happening? Not much. So I guess I'd better, I better get to making those videos then. Talk to you soon.